everyone, and welcome back to Jesse Heck Creative. Today we're going over the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Snizzard and Porantis Head from Hasbro. Before we begin, make sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button. Now let's get to it. So here's Snizzard, let's check him out. Snizzard is a really interesting looking head. It's kind of strange, there's a lot of teeth going all down the body. There's a cool frill right over here. There's an apple, which I guess is referring to Adam and Eve, I'm not sure. It reminds me a lot of the apple you see at the front of the Snow White ride at Disneyland, so that's pretty cool to me. The eye is a snake eye, which looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's just very snake-like from top to bottom. We have these little diamonds that snakes have on their backs, you know, all the way down the back. And there's a bunch of spikes going down the back, too. It's very nicely done. This rubbery material is pretty cool for the tail. He has snakes for arms, which is kind of weird, I guess. And, you know, snake heads for hands. This plating is really nice down the chest. It's really awesome looking. The whole bottom of the legs is just a big mass of snakes coming out. It's very intricately done and it's super duper cool and looks very nice. From the back, you know, it's more snakes and you can see a lot of the intricate, you know, just all these different, I, it's hard to describe. It's really hard to, it's just snakes. That's all I gotta say, it's just snakes all their scales and everything it's this guy is just made of snakes i never thought i'd really say that someone's made of snakes but yeah snizzard is made of snakes not much of a lizard now is he as far as accessories goes he comes with this coiled up snake it's very rubbery and very you know loose you can stretch it out pretty far it's a nice accessory and i usually like to wrap it around his leg it looks really nice and the texturing is done very well on it the little snake head's really cute he also comes with a snake lasso which is cleverly a snake biting itself almost an uberos but not quite it's a really nice looking piece though with the scales he also comes with a snake cobra bow and arrow with the cobra head as the top and the snakes wrapping around the bow it's just ridiculous in all the right ways you can't really fire it or move it it looks like it's already in action but it's a pretty neat piece and just adds to the weirdness of the figure. He lastly comes with this energy effect that's pretty cool. You know, it looks really nice until you realize it can attach to something. You can put it right on top of his head. It's a really neat piece and looks really creepy. There isn't really any way that you would put it. So just had fun with it and whatever look looks best, I think you should use. Yeah, looks kind of menacing and creepy and weird, like it's charging that golden apple. As far as articulation goes for Snizzer, the head is a surprise I will save for later, but the fin doesn't really move all that much. It's slightly rubbery a little bit. The tail is also rubbery. You could swivel it around, move it up and down, left and right to your heart's content. I don't like to move this rubber all that much as it may break over time, so I'm going to leave it straight on for now, even though it keeps the body from standing that well and now it's standing great. But yeah, there are times when the weight will have it just tip over very easily, especially with these loose joints on the bottom. So the chest can move left and right, back, forward, side to side, you know, very nicely, swivel as well. We can get up this far, down this far, all the way around with some swivel. And we also get swivel here, an elbow joint going here. The snake head can move down and up with a swivel as well. You have to move it and match it strangely to match the paint on the sides. You get a swivel at the top over here, splits down up this far. You can go actually all the way around with the leg if you really want to. Why would you though? Go back this far, down, you get a swivel down here. Knee right over here on that weird snake leg, down and up, and then pivot with two shallow peg holes at the bottom of the feet. It's a very loose joint down here, so be very careful. The articulation is okay. It's the look that really matters. And oh boy, are we going to see the look for this guy in just a second when we open that mouth of his. The jaw broke off first time I tried this, so I'm going to try to be sort of gentle with it. And this is just really freaky how this works. Yeah, the entire jaw splits off. And you have to push it in a little bit to make it function better. And this weird mouth comes out with two snakes, and I'm going, what were they on to make this thing? This is incredibly weird and very strange. I don't understand why this exists in this form. This is probably going to give me several nightmares. You can move this piece up and down 
you know, it's a rubbery piece and it's on a hinge, so it's hard to move in exactly the way you want. But I don't know, I'm just so confused by this. The head can swivel, you know, this way. Finally, when it's untethered from the further jaw piece, you can also move it in and out a little bit, up and down a tiny bit. But yeah, this piece can go down this far and up. I don't know, I'm just so confused by this weird piece. It's very unsettling and super surreal. I'm just going to cut before anything else weird happens. Similar to G.I. Joe Classified, you can actually give Snizzard all his weapons and accessories in all of his hands and make it look good. I wrapped the snake around his leg. I wrapped the lasso around his leg and here I gave him the bow and the energy crystal thing is up there and he just looks menacing and wonderful. Speaking of G.I. Joe, this guy looks like Mindbender cooked him up in some lab. Oh my god, this is frightening. Snizzard stands at just above 7 inches tall, next to the Red Ranger and the Yellow Ranger, and they scale well together. I don't even want to see if they could fit in his mouth, though. Ugh. And also here's Jesse Heck Creative. Um, uh, uh, I'm just gonna let Indiana Jones take care of this. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for watching so far. Make sure to click like, subscribe, share, and leave a comment. You can also click the bell icon for more creativity. Now let's get back to it. So here's Perantis Head, or Perantis Head, I might flip-flop between the two. Let's check this guy out! Perantis Head has a really nicely sculpted face. Those wrinkles are incredible. I love how good this looks. It even looks a little bit wet too, which is very nice. The gradient of color going from pink to whatever color the rest of the piece is, is wonderful. The eyes are just so dead. I kind of hate it. It looks like he's boring his way into my soul. The teeth are really cute and this little droopy sort of gullet thing is adorable and I like it a lot. I love how his shoulder pads look like shells and they're pretty awesome. His fins are really nice. It reminds me of Prydak from Bionicle, if you know what that is, I guess. And the fish theme is very apropos for that reference. We get some nice arms over here with some fins going down the back. We get a nice gradient of white and blue on the chest and torso area. We get some nice green, sort of sort of like coral green. I think this is coral pink over here too on his thigh going out. The amount of fins in this guy is incredibly well done. The gradient from green to white is wonderful on the back of this. His clawed feet are really cool. They could use something. That's my only complaint with the paint. Give a little weathering or something, like they've been in a scrape or scuffle, maybe break one of them off or something. The tail looks really cool too, and the scales in the back are wonderful. This is an incredibly beautiful piece, and I really love how they did it, especially the head. Oh my god, this is a masterpiece and a work of art. <laughs> as far as accessories goes, he comes with a grabbing hand, which you could swivel, and then hinge. It's a little bit tight on the sort of like swivel but it works out really well the hinge is good too you get a swivel and then a hinge on this one it's a little bit looser and much nicer the fist looks really great this hand looks really nice they're both well done with scales to boot it's awesome the grabbing hand is made for a weapon and what other weapon would a fish man have than weird fish chucks i don't get it either he has fish nunchucks the little fish heads on them little roly-poly fish heads Eat them up, yum. Yeah, um, this is weird. In addition to this, you can also add a whooshing effect on these guys. And this is just so bizarre. I'm sorry. Fish trucks. I don't get it. Um, uh, someone enlighten me in the comments, I guess. It's a really nice effect, though. It's very translucent. It looks really cool. The fish trucks are also exciting to see, I guess. The silver is well done on them, as is the color of the fish themselves. They don't need detail, they're weird enough. He also comes with these two grabby hands that right now make him look like his mother left him home on vacation. You get a swivel and then an up and a down. The hinge is kind of loose on this one. On this one, you know, it's pretty tight. You get that swivel too. They're very good hands and they're really kind of like, are really great for this expression. It's just making me laugh out loud so much. Yeah, these are really cool hands. They look nice. No scales on them as I messed up from before, but they look, you know, fishy enough. As far as our fishulation goes, please help. The head can actually swivel a little bit 
and it's kind of strange, like he's grinding his teeth. It goes up and down like he's biting, which is pretty neat. I think it's on a ball joint. I don't really want to check and break this thing. The jaw is kind of loose and loosey-goosey and kind of weird. You can position it any way you want, though. I like having it, like, you know, open or closed, whichever one, but in between is kind of weird. Having this move around, you get a sort of up on this. doesn't really work that well. goes all around with the shoulder pad. Pretty nice. A butterfly joint right over here works out really well. You can swivel and then a double hinged elbow that works better forward than to the side because of that armor plate again. It's pretty nice. You go down with this. This is a pliable rubber. This is a pliable rubber up here. Pliable rubber kinda, not really for this, it's sort of static. And the tail, you get a swivel and then down and then up. And then it's slightly pliable rubber over here. We also get a swivel at the chest, very clicky and nice side to side back forward or back with the joint forward with the joint one click forward kind of a shame one click back it doesn't really work all that well this ab joint right here out all the way you may want to watch out for these they kind of hinder it these little fins they are pliable rubber once again in you go up this far and back pretty okay you get a swivel at the top with the fin moving with it you also get a double jointed knee which works out pretty nice I guess for this figure because of the contours of the body, it works out pretty well. You get a swivel at the foot joint over here, and then down this far, not really a great up, pretty okay. You also get a pivot for that, and two peg holes at the bottom of the feet. The design of this character is amazing. I love it. I don't know if it's as good as Pudgy Pig, though. That guy had some kind of, like, sixth sense with the, you know coloration and sculpt on that guy. The colors on this guy are really striking though, and it isn't my favorite in the line, but I can definitely appreciate the artistry. Depending on how you measure him, you could either stand at just above six and a half or just above seven inches tall next to the Green Ranger and Pink Ranger, and they look good together. The colors actually mesh incredibly well here with those Rangers. And also here's Jesse Heck Creative. Oh my god! I never thought I'd see this! A new Italian place! Overall, I find that these two are pretty good. They do have their flaws and drawbacks, but they also have their successes and wins. Snizzard is way too much of a good thing. He is just wall to ceiling snakes, and it just is way too much. If they could scale it back somewhat, I would find it to be better, but having the weapons and the legs and everything being comprised entirely of snakes is just too much. I really do appreciate the fact that they gave him a rubber tail, but that's just too heavy. And I do like the crown thing and the fin on the top. Those are my big takeaways. Even the head when it's not transformed. It looks great. But when you take account the legs and the arms that are snakes and the weapons, it's just too much for me. It's a good concept, but way too much and overly executed. Boreanta's head is the opposite. He's very nice and clean looking. I love how he looks with that really nice sort of wet feel. The colors are great too, from the coral pinks and greens to the nice sea blue and white, and it just looks so wonderful. The little fish head nunchucks are really cute and strange, and I find him to be a much more palatable figure than the messy giant grease burger that is Snizzard. If I were to pick between the two, I would go with Parantis head. Snizzard if you're a herpetologist or someone who really loves snakes, but yeah, these scaly guys are super cool and the last of the monsters of the line thus far. Thank you so much for watching Jesse Heck Creative. Feel free to click like, subscribe, share, or leave a comment. You can also visit us at jessieheckcreative.com where you'll find more reviews like this one. Thanks again for watching and keep being creative. Stay tuned!